Hey, this is Dave from Bay Stencil. I'm going to show you how to take an, an SVG file of a bridged stencil from Bay Stencil and use it inside Lightburn to cut the stencil on your laser cutter. Now, when you get a stencil from Bay Stencil, you receive an email, and the email usually has a link in it to go to the Bay Stencil uh, download page for your stencil. So after you've received that email, you click on the link and you come to the page where your stencil is ready and it looks like we're going to have an image of Spider-Man here and we're going to download the stencil. When I download it, it's going to be a zip file and I'm on a Mac, you might be on a PC, but on a Mac the zip file automatically gets open for me. And uh, when I see that it's open, I can look inside the file and see that there are SVG layers in here. Um, those are by default the ones I'm going to use and I don't need to open these files up at all. I just need to upload them into Lightburn. Um, if you try to open these files, you might end up opening up Illustrator or Inkscape or a text editor or some kind of crazy file that you won't know what to do with. So just uh, upload, uh, upload it into, um, import it rather, into Lightburn. So the way I'm going to do that is import and uh, I think there's probably a convenience button for that as well and I'm going to go into the downloads where I was and open that file that came tick, 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 tick. SVG layers there we go uh, it's, they're not highlighted by default and I'm not sure why but I'm just going to open them one at a time and as I open them one at a time I'm going to notice that um, let's see here let's zoom in a little bit Tick, tick, tick. I noticed that there's an outline here, and this is the, the actually the white layer. Um, I don't really want the white layer, so I'm going to get rid of this one, and it looks like it's not connecting them. So uh, I'm going to select all of it, I'm going to get rid of it. And next I'm just going to import. Here we go. Here's the button, here's the uh, convenience button for that, the import button. I'm going to import uh, the second one. And I see that this one is a bunch of things together. Now, if I if I just go in and grab one of these things and pull it, like I just pulled Spider-Man's uh, thigh muscle away from the rest of Spider-Man. I don't want to manipulate or move any of these things around independently. So as soon as I get this in here, I'm going to highlight everything I have. I'm going to select all, and I'm going to group it together. And the way I do that is I'm going to go under Arrange and Group. That's uh, Alt or Control, uh, Control or Command G and that causes these things to all move together. I really don't want any of them to move independently. That's going to be clear later on. So I've got one of these things. This is the blue, the blue part of Spider-Man. Now I'm going to go in and import um, the next two layers. I'm going to import uh, the red layer. There we go. And as soon as that shows up here, like as soon as it shows up, everything's selected. I'm going to go into Arrange, Group, and Group everything together. That way, these red pieces don't move independently. Uh, and I'll do the, uh, the same thing for the dark blue layer finally. And I will make sure to group everything together. Um, if you don't group everything together and if you end up uh, pulling some pieces away or independently resizing these stencils and cutting them at different sizes or different scales, then it's going to be, you're, you're going to have a real mess on your hands when you go to paint it. It would be terrible if you painted the light blue layer and the red layer and you started to paint the dark blue layer and you noticed that it was a different scale than the other two layers. So really you need to be careful during this step. So what I'm going to do now that I want to um, resize them, I've got some air traffic coming in here, uh, I'm going to line them all up together as if I were painting them. And in order to do that, you notice that I'm just kind of like seeing where they would all fit together. This doesn't have to be exactly precise, but it needs to be enough so that you can see what the overall scale or size of the stencil is going to be. And I'm cutting this on a, a laser cutter with an 18 inch by 24 inch bed. So I don't want it to be any wider than uh, 24 inches. I don't want it to be any taller than 18 inches. And my material is actually a little smaller than that. So. I'm going to look at this thing and see, oh, the height of what I've selected is 5 inches and the uh, 4.3 inches and the width is 5 inches. I might just set the width of this thing to, for example, 12 inches. And if I do that, everything scales together. And you notice that the red, blue, and dark blue still match up the same way they did before. That's super important. 
Um, so to zoom out a little bit, you can see that um, this is all going to work together. I'll just go ahead and go into my zero point here. And since I've got all these things selected together, I can show them all together here. So when you go to cut, you're actually going to, um, to select one of the layers at a time. So for example, this red layer, you see, I'm going to select the red layer and then I'm going to um, frame around this layer and move my, move my laser head around to make sure that I've got my material centered correctly. And then I'm going to click um, start to, uh, to cut this layer. I'll do the same thing with the, by selecting the dark blue layer and by selecting the light blue layer in turn. And each time I can select different size materials, but notice that um, whatever you do, you're not resizing any of the layers, any of the stencil parts independently. You only resize them when they're all selected together. Um, also notice that I never touched an SVG file with any other program. I have my SVG sitting in here and I just uploaded the SVG files to Lightburn and I let, S, uh, let Lightburn manipulate the SVGs. That's it. Uh, there is one other tip that I wanted to share with you and that is if you are um, if you want to include the registration marks in these there's a special directory to look in. Uh, you can look inside the BS files directory and for example there's a uh, Let's look at the, I'm just going to import the layers 4, 3, and 4, 4, but I'm going to do them one at a time. Uh, so from inside Lightburn, I choose import, and I choose, uh, let's grab 4, 3, and notice that I'm going to group them together right away, group, command G, um, and then I'm going to do the same thing for, oops, I'm actually get, grabbing the wrong ones here, let me, let me stop. Stuff that's not what I wanted. I wanted to get in, not inside SVG layers, but I wanted to go up one. I want to go down into BS files because that is where um, uh, some special files live. And the bridge files here, you'll see that uh, as soon as I, as soon as this comes in, I also need again to group it together so that I can make sure that everything will be resized at the same time. This file actually contains registration marks. Uh, and it contains um, this little blurb about base stencil and the order number and also layer three of four. I'm going to grab one more of these just for illustration. Um, let's grab the fourth layer and open that and immediately group that together. So we have two layers. We have, um, notice they're not colored this time, but we have these two layers, this one and this one. We're also going to, we're going to put them together the same as before. Um, to size this thing, okay. Now, when I um, when I group them together and move them together and resize them together, notice that okay, notice that I'm resizing here with ease. Um, when I go to print these things, if I pick one at a time, I just select one, select this one, and when I print this, it's going to print these registration marks. It's really important that this registration mark doesn't move with respect to the, where the stencil pieces are because uh, this registration mark uh, needs to be, uh, for example, this registration mark here relative to this hand is a fixed distance and that needs to be unchanged compared to this distance between this registration mark and this thing. So all I'm trying to say is that when you, as soon as you import, you need to group so that nothing moves relative to each other. Okay, that's it. Uh, this is Dave uh, signing off from Bay Stencil.